As Azerbaijan's major attack into Armenian sovereign territory enters a second day, the talk about Armenians at the moment is one of what are our options? What are our foreign policy options? What are our military options, political options? But another option pertains to international courts, perhaps even the International Criminal Court. I'm joined now by Dr. Gurgen Petrosyan, a lecturer at the University of Nuremberg, to discuss this and more. So, Dr. Petrosyan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, before we get into detail about Armenia's options with regard to the International Criminal Court, you recently spoke, wrote about the, necess the necessity, I beg your pardon, to recognize the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. Uh, what did you mean by this? Can you explain that for our watchers? Um, yeah, uh, with pleasure. Um, international. Let's let's before before jumping into the the question of jurisdiction, we have to look into the geopolitical um, aspects. Why it is necessary to to consider also international criminal court? Look, um, from the um, yesterday, it was announced that uh, Armenian for, for policy foreign policy has acknowledged that they are going to they, they that they are um, trying to contact the UN Security Council, the Collective Security uh, Treaty Organization to have attention on the conflict and attention on aggression. But um, if we have a very, if we zoom into the conflict and into, into, the, into that uh, organization, we can see that those organizations at this moment are not that much effective in solving, the, solving, the, uh, solving this um, conflict. However, they can assist or they can somehow affect, but this is not that much effective. So let's look into the collective security organization. The members of the collective uh, security treaty organization like Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus and Russia, with, do, with all re that, uh, those respect um, to these countries, I don't believe that they can have any influence on, in, into the conflict. And seeing uh, also the consequences of um, the meeting, I do not believe this will have any kind of influence. When we look into the uh, Western side, we see that the European Union also tries to make some kind of acknowledgments, uh, condemnations uh, that uh, to stop the war. However, considering the situation of the European Union today and also the war, um, the aggressive war against Ukraine, it is really a bit difficult to consider also this political platform that the European Union will somehow affect into the into the conflict or it have, will have any influence into con into the conflict. Well, let's look what kind of instruments, legal instruments, are possible. We have the European Court of Human Rights, we have International Court of Justice, UN Security Council, um, also UN other mechanisms. Um, we have already ongoing proceedings before European Court of Human Rights. We have um, uh, proceedings before International Court of Justice. But everything, everything what we have in this uh, situation, we have the state responsibility where there, where we await that this, uh, the court will have any effect on the state and will call for the responsibility of Republic of Azerbaijan. But what is missing that those individuals who are committing uh, uh, international crimes, such as war crimes or crimes against humanity, and even aggression, crime of aggression, um, they still are out of this, uh, out of the jurisdiction. So the, into the game comes international court, uh, international criminal court which have the possibility to try or to investigate the crimes committed by the individuals during the conflict. So this is something which, of course, we have uh, another um, um, another instrument, such as the uh, universal jurisdiction instrument, which is also ongoing process. However, to make it more internationalized, the International Criminal Court is very important in this aspect. Uh, on, the, on the other side, it is also important to involve International Criminal Court into this into this conflict because it will be a new platform for the investigations. For the, and of course. For the uh, for the very long distance, it will not, uh, or, or short notice, it will not solve the conflict or stop the conflict. But the involvement of the new platform and new organization into the conflict may still have some kind of influence in the conflict, and will of course help the Armenian um, diplomacy um, to to during the negotiations. Um, let's dive into the very jurisdictional perspective. What are the avenues of applying to the ICC? One way is becoming a full member to the ICC by ratific ratifying the, the Rome Statute. However, we have um, a decision from the Constitutional Court of Armenia, I think from 2005, that, they are, that the, the Rome Statute was considered um, against the Constitution. So there are some technical um, um, 
um, um, um, reasons um, uh, why the Rome Statute was not um, ratified in 2005 or 2006, if I'm not wrong. However, these amendments may be still done in the Constitution to make uh, the, the way to the Rome Statute available. But if we want, uh, and very important at this moment, if we are becoming, if the Armenian become, uh, becomes the, a full member to the ICC, so the jurisdiction will work from the moment when it ratifies the, the Rome Statute. So it will not have the um, the um, retroactive, retroactive effect, uh, retroactive um, um, force on the um, on the past events. The another way, the second way, is of course the uh, recognition or declaration of the recognition of the uh, jurisdiction of international crom uh, international criminal court, which will have um, um, time and territorial boundaries. So the state who recognizes the, um, the jurisdiction it limits itself with time. And, and territory in which aspect the international criminal court may have uh, look into uh, may have look in and of course to make investigations in that area. So um, according to the according to the Rome Statute, it will give also possibility um, to look into the crimes which are happening in the territory of the member state or the, to, uh, uh, into the uh, territory of the declared state. So this, uh, independent of the fact, who exactly commits the war crime? It is Azerbaijani national, or I don't know, Ukraine Russian uh, national, or Russian uh, national. So it's in, it's irrelevant. The important is where exactly the crime is happening. We have already practice, a uh, similar practice in Ukraine. Ukraine lodged the declaration um, of recognition of jurisdiction of the ICC. Uh, we have the Georgia, um, who also. Uh, considers um, um, the fact that the crimes were happening um, in the in the territory of uh, of Georgia, and we have of course the situation in Afghanistan where the U.S. Uh, nationals could be held responsible for a commission of crimes. So this is this is the way. Um, this these are the two ways um, of uh, of joining the ICC, and I think at this moment we have to consider either one or the other. Um, to to become the member because this is this is a new platform which should be used in the diplomacy. You also wrote, um, it is true that it may take time, but this can be a new and fresh platform in the direction of conflict resolution. I'm curious how you think such a move could influence Azerbaijan's behavior. Um, you know, this the, the becoming a member to the ICC it has also no preventive mechanism. I hope, I do believe that all the states which are member to the ICC will, of course, um, because they are also obliged to cooperate with the ICC in order to investigate the crimes. This kind of tight cooperation in the criminal matters will also uh, be as a pre preventive mechanism to stop Azerbaijani uh, soldiers to commit the crimes. Of course, this is uh, only only hope. But in case the Azerbaijani forces are com uh, will commit the crimes in the future and are committing now. The, the fate of these soldiers will, will already be decided because they will be under, under, uh, under investigation. Because the prisoners of war were tortured, the civilian uh, objects were bombed, civilians were targeted. So this is, um, um, this is already um, is happening. And the, those soldiers who were committing those crimes um, will be targeted um, under in, in the criminal criminal um, in a law perspectives, international criminal law perspectives. So I do believe that um, this can work as a preventive mechanism uh, for the future and will, of course, help um, uh, uh, during the negotiations with the Republic of Azerbaijan. And from your observations and contacts, do you think the political will exists in Armenia to make such a move? And if it doesn't, what can be done in this regard? I think that we have to speak about the possibilities. I think we have to um, try to convince our uh, our politicians to to start uh, thinking in this direction. Um, I I also think that the Russian uh, presence of the Russian um, influence in um, this conflict may somehow um, may some may somehow stop this kind of movements. I. To understand the reasons behind, but I think in order to have another plat platform, because this the, the the already used platforms, they are not really that much effective in stopping the conflict or trying to give us some kind of solution. So I, I do believe that uh, the ICC is one of the um, one of these new platforms which should be used. Mm. And finally, Dr. Petrosian, I want to ask if Armenia were to take this route and, for example, open proceedings against Azerbaijan, 
uh, what could the focus be? War crimes, territorial integrity, um, how would you explain that to our watchers who may not have much of an idea of how these proceedings work? Well, at the ICC, there are, f uh, there are four um, crimes, international crimes, that could be um, uh, investigated and, uh, and tried. One is the genocide, another crimes against humanity, war crimes, and crime of aggression. So starting from the, maybe from the war crimes, which, because they are mostly evident what, uh, what we see also in, during these two days, um, we see um, the war crimes um, can be tried before the court. Another aspect is crimes against humanity, which is mostly um, uh, attack uh, against the civilian population. And due to the time, we can also see these kind of developments that targeting the, uh, the civilians can be also considered somehow already under, this, uh, under the elements of um, crimes against humanity. Another aspect is, is the crime of genocide. This is a bit controversial um, crime in international society. Uh, in the international community. Um, not every state is really happy to uh, see that as a crime, um, to see aggression as a crime, but we see also that the uh, Russian Federation also does not consider um, um, crime of aggression as a, um, as a crime. Um, I, don't, I don't think this could be really um, used before the ICC. However, this is not a topic which is totally forbidden to speak about. The ways of activating the crime of aggression before the ICC is still possible. And I think there is also a political, uh, political issue here, because if the International Criminal Court may not use that um, against the Russian Federation, uh, maybe they can start uh, testing the crime of aggression um, at the Azerbaijani um, authorities, because this could establish a precedent that the crime of aggression should be punished. And what we have seen in the past uh, during the Nuremberg trials, that the crime of aggression or crimes against peace that time was actually um, considered to be punished because this was considered also one of the biggest crimes in the in the human history. Well, Dr. Petrosian, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Emilio. And continue following Sivunet on the latest on the situation in southern and eastern Armenia.